constant Cree invasions? Then why not sign up for a crash course in the ancient martial art of Kang Fu, held at your local Kang Munity Center? city on the mountain. Shane Kang didn't bring that into Chronopolis. Guess he must have had a budget to stick to. Citizens with suggestions on how to improve Chronopolis can submit them to the big chasm surrounding my citadel. While it may look as though your idea is being thrown into the abyss, I actually have a very impressive and high-tech system in place for collecting this data. <laughs> what is up, party people? Hello, hello, and welcome to Marvel Let's Play. We are going to get into LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, but we're not alone. I'm Josh Soleil, and we got Arthur Parsons, Head of Design at TT Games. Arthur, what's up? Everything is up. Everything is up, because I'm here. I'm on the internet. I'm live with you. <laughs> this is great. I love this. I love this. Guys, this game is available right now. PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. We're going to get into the game. We're going to show you about it. We're going to ask Arthur a ton of questions. Put your questions in chat uh, so we can ask him all about this wonderful, wonderful game. So I thought what better way is starting as Spider-Man with Oscorp right there in the background. <laughs> why wouldn't it be, right? That, that's, that's one of those iconic shots that we wanted. It's like, you've got to have Spidey, you've got to have Oscorp. So this this game this is, is so yeah, great. It's it's amazing. I, I love this. So one of my favorite parts in this game, I'm gonna get off Spidey for a second, is the ability to fly through this world. It's huge. How, okay, so how did your team decide to have 18 Marvel locations? Like how how, how did that come to be? Okay, so it was. <laughs> it, <laughs> this this is like a nostalgia trip for me. This is like great to see this. Obviously, because it's been like. You, know, you work on the games and then they take ages to make and then they come out and then you, like other things happen and stuff so it's just like I, i'm actually like all stuck to, to look back at, at chronopolis um so the question was like how do we do it so anyone that played lego marvel superheroes the original game knows that we had a huge manhattan the reason that we had uh chronopolis was we were trying to warn up ourselves and i know that sounds really stupid <laughs> um why would you want to warn up yourselves um the, the team really wanted to just outdo themselves and, and, and like like beat expectations of players by doing something bigger and different. And um, because the storyline revolves around like the most awesome bad guy, which is Kang, um, the, like the comics are just, everyone goes, ah, oh, it's so hard to make video games um, in the Marvel Universe. It's like, no, it's not. Just read comics because <laughs> guess what? 
it's all your work is done for you. So uh, anyway, so yeah, um, Chronopolis was just something that jumped out at us, and we we're like, this is like the coolest thing because it gives you the 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 excuse to throw in, like, where else can you throw in like Noir Manhattan or the old Wild West um, or, or or like like 2099? It's just it, it's the most amazing like freedom to just throw a load of crazy stuff in the players. I I totally agree. It's you know. It, there's something for every single Marvel fan, you know, the hardcore Marvel fans that love, that, that have all the comics, that collect everything, that that can understand a reference. It's just like, whoa, wait a second, what? And you know, and for the new Marvel comic fans that have their characters they love, it's the entire spectrum of that, and you do it so so well. Just to show the map, like that was me flying around the map, but this is the entire map of the game. Wow. Yeah, it's so what? Big. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to have like no twitches and flashbacks now at just like h how much work like the team like put in to, to do this you know to have yeah to have so many locations uh, man thing swamp yeah. like the fact that you have man thing swamp in there <laughs> yeah it's it's the coolest thing um and then th that that was it like we just wanted to yeah you know, we, we are we are marvel fans and so we wanted to make sure that like we're making a game that we would want to play, um, which is really ironic because you know the, the minute you've just finished a game, the last thing you want to do is, is play a game. <laughs> but then you know you, when, once you've had a breather, once you've had a vacation, um, once you've had a, a, a couple of like you know nights to decompress and and just like you can get then go back and just go wow because obviously you, you only see it all as it is once you've had that like buffer that buffer to just kind of like to take a break I, I guess it's the same it must be the same for, for people that like you know work in movies or work in tv or, or, or when the, the writers that write books you you need a little bit of time to then go back and appreciate um but yeah the like the, t the team really did outdo themselves how much time do you give yourself before you're like okay i'm ready to jump back in Okay, it, it kind of varies. I, like, I'm going to hold my hands up now, and I probably shouldn't because there's people watching. I'll, like, in all honesty, I I, I haven't, like, 100%ed LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 on a released version of the game. So I, I've done it on an unreleased version before it came out. But obviously, like... That counts. I, I feel I like that counts. I, I would count that. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> And Jameson looks so good as a minifig. This is the coolest thing, right? Characters look like the Marvel characters as minifigs look amazing. They, they look really cool. It's like here, like this, like this version of Hulk. Yeah, he's just like so cool with it, like the shoulder armor piece and everything, ready to go to battle in in, in like Sakaar. Love it. Minifigs make stuff just look awesome. So we have a question in chat. How was the process of putting so many Marvel characters together and giving their own voice and personality? <laughs> like, that's a serious amount of work. Um, yeah, I, I can't even remember. I, I would probably have to Google how many characters were, like, with with the, the, the DLC content for this game. It's probably, like, like 300. Yeah, I think it's over 300. Over 300 Marvel characters. That's got to be a Guinness World Record. I th it has have to, to be. Get... It totally has to be. Where's your plaque? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> get on the phone. Wait, come on, Guinness. Um, yeah. Like, the, the, the job is, like, really hard because what, you know, like, I, okay, I'll give an example. So I'm going to grab Loki. I've got Loki there, right? So, like, you start with a minifig, and then, so the character artist will build this in 3D. So build a character. And then it's going to go to the, the, the riggers that put the skeleton in to animate it, and then the animators bring it to life um, brilliantly. And then, like, like the writers have got to write the dialogue lines, and, and the designers have to, like, design the moves that we want. And then um, we then have to sort of, like, get that in the game, and then the mechanics programmers, or, like, whatever the mechanics are going to be that we've asked. But it's, it's like there's so many people involved in, like, one minifig, and then you've got like all of them. Multiply then, that yeah, by three hundred. Did it just slam on its own? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, when you see uh, I Am Fist and, and all, all the different things that Iron Fist can do, or Kamala Khan, or whoever it may be, it's 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 a huge amount of work from a lot of people. But 
because like we, we, we spend a lot of time in, in the very early stages of the project, like going through character by character, like what's that character known for? What, 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 you know, what powers or abilities does he or she have? Or, you know, what are the qu kind of quirky things they do as well? Because we'd like to put like quirky things in there. Like Maybe a you may have seen like Gwenpool gets a drunk out and stuff. Um, which, uh, yeah, like, like, so Kamala Khan was like an awesome character. But he's a lot of work because of like the, the, the whole bend and the stretch and yeah. everything that goes on. But but it's this that like the reason we do it is because of like this. We don't want a character just to feel like any other character. They've got to feel like the character they are. So yeah, we put a lot of a lot of time and effort in. Um, and it all it, I guess it all starts with the designers going like this is the thing, and then the animators that we have, um, so, you know, the, the team that bring the characters to life. They, they have a really brilliant way of working where they'll sit there and they have like, um, you know, like you've seen mood boards. Um, you always see mood boards around. But they have a, like a mood board for each character. And so the animator assigned to each character has a mood board and kind of like writes out the, the personality traits and things that happened like in the comics and things they're known for. And, and then that kind of forms the animations that they do. Um, I love this mini game, by the way. Oh, I love this it. Was, like, this was like so cool. I want to see these um, move boards. Where are these move boards? <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. I, here's the thing. I, I, I've always sort of said that, because um, you know, like we've been around quite a long time making video games. I've always said that if somebody did like a behind-the-scenes TV show um, of how a video game was made, and then you know, condensed obviously condensed it down because you know, you'd have to be like edit highlights and stuff. It would be such compelling viewing, I, I, I promise you. Some of the like meetings we have, um, some of the decision making, the, the way people work, it would just be really good. Um, but, but yeah, as long as it was funny as well. <laughs> just needs to have the humor. Yeah, I love Noir Spider-Man. Oh, wow. yes. I, the and way like here, right? Yeah, go for it. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Josh. I'm no, 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 here. please, please, please. I, I just, I have a habit of just talking. Anyone that's worked with me knows I just can't show up. So here, like, the lighting in this level, I remember like, so so when we start a level, it's all gray box. It's all just really boring. It's just like squares and cube rectangles. It's so dull. And then when the first lighting pass went in and it was this kind of, this noir aesthetic and it's all kind of like, like yeah, one monochromatic hint. And I was like, this looks just, this is just perfect. Um, yeah, I love this level. Just the fact that it's so good, you know, to see it. It's so good. It, it, the fact that each location has its own vibrancy, its own character. You know, when you fly into another world, it's not like it doesn't feel like the same thing, just with different buildings. It's a completely new design, and the way that you brought that to life and your team brought that to life is something that you rarely see, especially with an IP this big. We're talking about the Marvel universe. There's so much. Yeah. And it's so easy. I feel like, you know. To be like, okay, that's gonna take a lot of work. Let's not include that. You guys are like, no, it's gonna take a lot of work. Let's include it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sometimes that's like, uh, sometimes that's our downfall where, <laughs> we, you know, we sit there and, and like, yeah, we'll be partway through development and, um, you know, work. one of us, you know, one of the designers, we'll, we'll just sit there and go, hey, I've got a really good idea. Why don't we? And you know, <laughs> dot dot dot. And at that point, you could just see the rest of the team going, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, those designers have been thinking again. Um, I, I tell you, the worst thing is, um, the worst thing is when you go to like a, a trade show. Um, so when you go to E3 or when you go to Comic Con or you know, any of these events where we've actually um, shown the game or we're talking about the game, you know, we do a panel. And, and, and then from that, you feed off the player's energy. You know, you feed off these people that will be asking questions like, yeah, hey, mister, is this character in the game? Or, you know, all of that stuff and then when you go back to the the office you're just full of energy you just like because you've absorbed all this energy from other people um and then you're like oh you won't believe like these people are asking about this and they love this and they want more of this and, and like can we add this character and then and everyone can just see it like coming it's like he's gonna ask for more stuff like they, they, <laughs> they they're gonna want more characters or they're gonna want like you know more lines of dialogue or more moods or whatever it may be but I, th I think you know the, the team thrive on it, and I think that's where, you know, when when people like have played, you know, say Lego Marvel Super Heroes, um, 
yeah, or Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. And if you haven't, why not? But like when, <laughs> when people have played it, they can see the enthusiasm that goes in. And and that I think is is like super important. If you want a game to just like kick back to, you know, it's we're not we don't take ourselves seriously. We take we take the IP super seriously. But we take the game as being like this is a game we just like kick back and have fun. Uh, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter like how into games you are, just kick back and have fun. Um, and that's what we want people to do. And the way that it's a local mul multiplayer as well, someone who can just sit right next to you, jump right in, and now you're traversing this entire world together, I think even makes that even more. Because that's that's how I used to play these games. I used to be like, uh, my roommates would be like, hey, let's sit down, let's put on LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, and let's go through, let's put on LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, and let's just play. And then four hours yeah. go by, you're like, where did the time go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? This is the, it's the coolest thing because, you know, uh, like loads of people like that, that are watching this will, will, will be able to relate where um, you know maybe uh, like in my case my wife doesn't play uh, as many games as I do or you, you may find that you know um, someone someone's boyfriend doesn't play games as much as they do or whatever it may be right but with a Lego game it, it's kind of a leveler whether you're like a serious gamer or you're like a, just a casual gamer it's a game that, that like like levels the playing field and brings people together so they can sit on the couch together and have that like enjoyment of, oh my, you won't you won't believe this or you won't believe that or or even um we have had some like because we get like some really great letters in from people, um you know telling us about their experiences with games and how sometimes they help them overcome things or sometimes how they help inspire them. Um, but the best ones for me are like when, like we've had like a parent who's just sort of said, do you know what, this game's allowed me to express my love of Marvel. To, to my like you know like six or seven year old child and and, and it's like that passing down of, of knowledge from of comic books which we all have because you know we all do watching, you know, watching cutting reading comics whatever you know living out our superhero fantasies um and you want to share that with people but there's only like so many people you can share it with being able to share it with with like a loved one is just it's the most magical thing and it, and it's like this game is a vehicle for that to someone somewhere that's so cool i couldn't have put it better myself that's that's exactly what these games were for me because i have a lot of friends that they they like video games but they're not uh, you know they're not a hardcore gamer for, per se or they don't, they don't play gamers as much games as much as i do but when they start seeing this and they see my love for marvel and their love they they're like whoa this is something that we could play together and then you're spending quality time together and it's it's not yeah. like it's not like a super it's not you're not competing against each other which i think is super important you're working together yeah which which it's it's so important it's like i get the the need for games where it's competitive and it's you know it's that pvp thing um but at the same time it's great to have like to, to have that working together um you know some of my fondest memories uh, of lego games are you know playing them well developing them really <laughs> with, with my daughter um and her even you know while we're working she'd come into the office sometimes and sit and play them and, and you just point out like you know daddy what's this or what, what's that or why are you doing that no one's gonna like this and, <laughs> and, but but playing it together in that way to find a great balance and then actually then experiencing the the, the sort of like game when it's come through gestation period i guess and and it's born into the wild um and seeing the reaction to those moments from from gamers is is fantastic so your, um, your daughter's again, basically the assistant the assistant to the head of design <laughs> yeah don't say that she'll expect to be paid um and then we're in all kinds of legalities so we well, can't go there all right, all right. <laughs> yeah it's fine it's fine like she gets the credit in in, in, uh, in, in games and that's like it is one of those things where we do actually actively encourage like team members um, to, to get like our families involved because we're yeah, making games can be tricky. Um, so getting the families involved, especially in play testing, because there's nothing better than getting um, like kids to play the games because they give you an honest answer. Um, sometimes you don't want to hear it, by the way. But, <laughs> Like at the, uh, in, in the early stages, like while we're still making it, that's the time to get them involved because they'll tell you like, oh, I'm stuck here. I don't quite understand this or, you know, this, this thing's like, like a bit weird. I'd like, there's a great story with 
and I, I, obviously we've got Lego Marvel Superheroes 2 here, but Lego Marvel Superheroes, like the original game, the very first bit, like, you're there. Grand Central Station's in front of you. You've got Iron Man. Yep. It's like, this is the coolest, this is the coolest you thing. you got Hulk, and I remember that. Yeah, and Coulson says, like, welcome back to New York. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh, this is amazing, right? When we, before that game came out, we had a version of that where Iron Man couldn't fly. Whoa. Right? And, and the reason we had that in was, we're like, we, we, we sat there going, oh, you know what? Like, this could be someone's very first game. Like, they're not going to be able to, like, how are they, are they going to be able to fly? There's so much to take in. It's like, no, like, we're, gonna, we're not going to have Iron Man fly. And then we'll teach it later. And then we did a play test with kids. And, and like, <laughs> I remember that this young girl, like, came and she picked it up. And she was just pressing buttons. She wasn't going anywhere, just, like, and I was like, are you stuck? I was just like, like you know, looking back, I should have just, I, I should have gone like, there's something wrong. Despite the senses of things. But he was like, I was like, are, are you stuck? Are you? And, and, and she just turned around and went, this is rubbish. Iron Man can't fly. And I was like, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Team, let's reset. Let's think again. So, and from, you know, from, from that day forward, we, we, yeah, it's like every character does everything that it should do. We don't like teach it, like they do everything. So Iron Man's got repulses and rockets and fly and can, can call in like help and get in and out of the suit. And, and that's how it has to be. But yeah, you know, it's always done based on, you know, sometimes um, as, 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 as aging industry veterans, we think we know best. We don't know best. We have to do the testing the research we have to validate everything we want to do because at the end of the day we want people to love what we make um so you've got to get get those people involved oh that's what a story but you even, you even guys went a step further the replayability in this game where you can take a character that you unlocked later on and go back and do those puzzle elements that you know only Iron Man could do, or only Spider Man could do, or only certain Marvel characters can do, which allows you to go back to the world and find those secrets and find those things and unlock all those things. So just the, just the replayability alone. Oh man, fantastic job to even think about that. I wouldn't even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like we like to think of the Lego games being like they're super trusted, right? Um, you know what you're gonna get for your dollar, like. Video games are expensive. There's, there's, let's make no bones about it. It's a form of entertainment, you know, and, and there's a ticket price. We want to make sure that there is so much bang for buck for that ticket price that that people know, okay, this is a Lego Marvel game. This is going to be worth my money. I'm going to get like a serious amount of hours. I, in fact, I may get that many hours that I may not even get there. Um, but we pack so much content in there because we want all the little this is just sorry i'm just distracted by this like crazy thing like, um, but I, I i remember making this this was like this was so funny um yeah there was a there was a point in time where the car didn't quite work and you came in here the car was spinning around there was laser lights everywhere it's like yeah i think i think we need to fix this guys um anyway yeah sorry um so the free play stuff is is and the additional content we try and fill everything we do with little touches that, that everyone will appreciate, but also just stuff to go back to because, you know, we know that when you, if you find a game you love, if you find a game that you really like, like gel with, you're going to want to play more of it. And that's why like, you know, obviously we saw with Chronopolis before, it's huge. But if you go down to ground level, there's, there's little like characters from the Marvel Universe or there's like, some civilians from that era that you can talk to and, and you just hear the chat in the background of like just they comment on everyday life the, the, the real people we try to bring everything to life so that people just have hour after hour after hour of exploration um some people might not see it all but for those that do i think the completionists out there they really appreciate like everything that the team puts into these games um and and, and like a little here's a little secret that nobody knows Usually, um, like myself and, and like the, the, the sort of like the senior uh, game director and, and, and design staff, we only find stuff just before we finish the game because everyone tries to sneak loads of cool hidden content in. <laughs> um, and it's only right at the end 
that we find it all, and then you, you'll be playing it just just as we get into the end of the game and we're checking everything over, and you find stuff and you're like, oh, that is so cool. Um, you know, like there was little touches in um, Avengers Mansion, like especially in Gwenpool's bedroom, that came in last minute, and I'm like, oh, this is the coolest thing. This is just so like every nod is there, if that makes sense. Little, yeah. Just little touches. Little touches back, like the post credits. I'm not going to even say what it is. The post credit. We always like to do post credits. The post credits for this game is like crazy funny, but dials directly into a specific comic, uh, a specific comic, and, and, um, from the run that, that inspired the game. And and it's like you look at it and go, yeah, okay, this is like I'm in now because these guys have done their their research. They love the material. And, and this is why. So it's it's so cool. I love that. We ha we have we have more questions in chat. Okay, sorry. No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? We're we're here for all of this. This is great. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm keep talking. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, what were your favorite areas to include in the game? Okay, so as you can tell by my accent, um, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm from uh, the UK. It was great to be able to get medieval England in the game, um, just just because it's just weird. Medieval England <laughs> in the Marvel universe—that is just like, like that's bonkers. So it was cool to do that. Um, it was great to get Sakaar in there. It was great to get ancient Egypt in there because we've always wanted to do that. Um, there's so many cool areas in this in this game, and I think that's, you know. Like Lemuria, it's like you'd never think of going to Lemuria, but we kind of wanted to. And I think, again, this builds on the fact that, you know, in Lego Marvel Super Heroes, we did, at the time, we were like, yeah, just throw all this cool stuff in, blah, 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 blah. you know, this is going to be amazing, and we're going to need to go here, and we're going to need to go to, you know, Rikers Island, and we're going to go to, to like, go to the Baxter building. And then when we got to Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, it was like, Guys, we can't go where we've already been. Come on, let's like like we're gonna have to really think here. And that was obviously when we cottoned on to Kang and Chronopolis and everything. It's like this is just we can go everywhere. Like, yeah, do we want to go to Halle? Yeah, Halle, yes we do. Let's go to Halle and everything else. So that's why we just sort of we we basically went like as as in as many places as we possibly could. The way to, we're just talking about the way to defeat Kingpin is to get him tired from dancing to his favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like yeah, you know, that, that's typical Lego humor because you know, when we make games, we're like these moments, we, we build them up, super dramatic. We, we have to, but then we want them to be like funny and quirky and humorous, and um, we want people to just like have fun with it and be able to go, oh, I like point out the dancing here. sharks. Yeah. They, 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 there's a, there's a shark there, and you know, it, it's you know, there's someone dancing with a pig <laughs> in the conga line. Like, why not? And like, and then why gets, not? And, and it's it's that sort of level of let's do something like when I say serious, I want to do it. I'm not going to do air quotes because it's such a 90s thing, but I want it like you, you want to be serious, but then you want to have fun. And again, anyone that's played Lego Marvel series, the first one, we did that. We had that moment with Venom and the lights go off and it's like dun, 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 dun. and then you're like boom Venom in your face scare and it's like because that's like that's what big big boy games do but then it's a Lego game so then we then we like take it away and have fun and again we just want to do it do it with this these were cool by the way the, so we, we tried to reinvent the status screens and so we wanted to make it look like a comic book the work and, and this is the, the work and effort involved you know to get that end frame of the cutscene to then go onto the front of the book and peel open that was like that was like a serious amount of work <laughs> um and the ripple okay so the ripple you, yes yeah so if you watch here when you unlock a, you unlock a character and then see that ripple through i remember like there was one evening um the programmer's name is Mava, a um, great guy he was sat there and we had this huge debate about the level of ripple because it was like originally there was no ripple and it was like yeah this i'm not sure this feels right and and these cards are really small because obviously there's loads of characters and then mava did the ripple thing and it was like you know what that's perfect and, and that's you know for a programmer to like take the thing that you're asking them to do and then they they build on it that's the great thing about our games everyone in the team 
will sort of take what what sort of we design and then they'll add to it to try and make it better it's like party hats are always <laughs> you can never go wrong with party hats I and this was a, this was great. You know, sorry, ha no, being able to have like the yeah, pig's got a fire hat on. There you go. Um, to be able to have different versions of the same character interact with each other was like super cool. Yeah, being able to have like one Cap Captain America talk to another. So we had like Wild, Wild West Cap talking to, to modern day Cap, or, or there when you've got Spider Man Noir and, and Spidey, and that sort of thing's cool. She, I love She-Hulk. She She's great. such a great Her character. jump in this game, every time, I'm going to see if I can do it to show you guys. Every time I jump with She-Hulk and the entire map just like whoosh, whooshes through your face. Oh, yeah. I love it. See, how cool is that? Like, I love the way that like you've got the, the snowy mountain so, blending in Alex, next to like, like Oh, there's many there. It, it just everything like it just looks so good. Look at this! Look at this roster! Like, look at I have so much work to do to unlock a lot of characters, but oh my goodness! Like, yeah. what? So I want to play yeah. this. I'm going to play this game again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm probably going to have to go out and buy it. No, I guess, what? I know, that's, I know that sounds. I know that sounds silly. Um, I I, I always. It, we get a copy of the game when we've made one, which is like super cool. I'll, I'll usually give it away to someone. But the best thing we've got are these. So I don't know if you've seen these. Look at that. You get yeah, to I have. I have my Loki one on my backpack still from uh, three years ago. Yeah. So like you get you get a little trophy for each game we make. So there's like Super Heroes one and two, oh, nice. and they're like super super collectible. They're, that that's what I keep. But um, yeah, the copies I, I generally give away. Oh yeah, those are oh those, yeah, those are different. I have the ones that were you guys were giving away at E3, I think, three years ago, like the yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah the keychain yeah. ones. I have the keychain ones, but those are awesome. Yeah, those ones are super rare. So did you yeah. did you guys uh, give more love to medieval England than any other location on the map? Just wondering. Ask you for a friend. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say no because that would be really unfair. But it does have really shiny floor. Like if, I don't know if you can get like yeah, oh, yeah let me get, the get the angle. Actually, there we'll find there's. Look! Look how shiny the floor is. It's like there's there's some care and love gone into there from one of the art team. They're definitely British. The jousting. Like, yeah, <laughs> our floors are going to be like the shiniest floors you can possibly get. The pig some jousting. Hot jousting action. <laughs> what was the, where was the pig jousting idea? Where did this come from? I I know exactly where this idea has come from, and and it's going to be like two members of my team. It's going to either be Dewey or Dawn. Like, it has to be. I'm probably going to be wrong, and they'll probably tell me tomorrow. Like, but th this, this has got, this has got, actually, this has got Dewey written all over it. I love it. I absolutely love it. He, he, he loves to put a, an authentic twist on on something that you'd expect, but that you wouldn't. Pig Jasting. I've forgotten about that. You know, that's amazing. Maybe that's what what happens in like like remote villages in, in, in England. I've just never been there. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Um, I, yeah, I live in a remote village, but but yeah, I've never picked jazz. Well, you got to add that to your bucket list now. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, I'm going to just like yeah, type that in right here. <laughs> <laughs> Set a reminder for pick jazz. Oh man. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, we have a question in chat about the roster. Which okay. was the first superhero you guys designed for the game? Okay, right. So this is a this is a this is a slight cheat, right? So for the, for the Lego Marvel Super Heroes two, the first character we actually worked on uh, was was Spidey because we'd had uh, Spidey in, in Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And, and trying to capture the essence of Spider-Man and the freedom of Spider-Man is really hard, like, like really hard. Um, and I think over the years, like lots of developers have, have made some terrific Spider-Man games and they would all probably say how hard it is. So we started with Spider because we figured that like he has to feel great. You know, he has to feel like super cool. Yeah, mini fig super cool. And you know, being able to stop, being able to hang upside down, being able to go up and down on his web, being able to like freely like launch and then release late. And there's so much to do. So because we knew he would be hard work, we started with Spidey. We kind of had done Iron Man before, 
So Iron Man was more a case of like, we know where the difficulty is going to come because we've done it so many times. But what we've got to do is just get the new suits right and, and, and the feel right. Um, so we always like to tackle the more difficult jobs first. So Spidey was one of them. Um, Thor was actually another one, believe it or not, because what we, we wanted to make sure that, that again, like we evolved because like, let's not forget, there was like probably four years in between Lego Marvel Superheroes 1 and 2. And we wanted to get the most out of like the hardware, be able to get the most out of that game in terms of the most mechanics, most abilities, um, you know, the effects, visuals, everything else. And um, yeah, that's where we put the effort in. And that's, that's where we do some, like, some of the crazy special moves, um, being able to, to do, you know, various things like, you know, lightning explosions or like i say the quirky stuff like Look, the, uh, drum kits or um there's some great musical characters as well so. Whoa, look at that we can do we it we can do it i love the puns the puns in these games are amazing <laughs> yeah we we live for puns I, I don't know whether it's something intrinsically english um and we and we like plays on words or or things like that but yeah we we do love like our, our, our puns. Um, you can never have enough alliteration. Um, so. so this this game, for, for those of you who have yet to play it or are learning uh, now about it, it's an original story written by yep. an award-winning comic book writer, Kurt Busick. Yep. What was it like to work with him on this game? Well, you see, like... We like so we 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 wrote Lego Marvel Superheroes. We wrote that original story, and then um, when we came to do this game, because it was based off of some of Kurt's comics, um, we were, you know, we, we were like, oh, I want to do a story about Kang because like, you know, like we we've, we've done various bad guys and we're just sat there. like Kang's the cool bad guy because effectively can turn back time so anything's possible um so we did we did that and then i remember being on a call because um i don't know if you know but like we speak to um our colleagues uh marvel games regularly when we're making a, a video game uh, with marvel so we, we have regular phone calls and check-ins and we talk about stuff and you know we, we, we're trying to get the best mix of stuff and, and we were talking and, and um i was it was, it was a call with Bill Roseman, and we were, we were basically going over stuff, uh, and it was it was a little nod to something. We had something in the story. I can't remember what it was. There was something in the story that we got stuck on. And we were trying to fix like a, a, like a plot hole, and, and Bill just went, I wonder what Kurt would do. And I was like, what would Kurt do? And he went, well, I'll tell you what. I'll phone him, and I'll let you know. And I was like, what do you mean you'll phone him? And, and obviously, you know, for those that don't know, Bill though he works in games he's, he, he's an ex-editor of comics and like he knows Kurt he was just like yeah I phone Kurt and then it was like do you want Kurt to basically come in and, and like you know take what you guys have got knock it into shape craft it and we're like yep let's do it <laughs> and then that was the coolest thing because you know Kurt's, a, Kurt's like like a proper old school comic guy just like knows everything and so he's he, he's he's helping add that authenticity in every single place. Have like, have you thought of adding this character? Have you thought of adding that character? Yeah. And like in in terms of Ravona, who's like obviously a, a, an integral character in the story, and like you see at the start how, how the, 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 the sort of like dynamic is with her and Kang, and like her transformation to a character called Terminatrix is like super cool, and that that was all like. Kurt and, and his influence and I think it just helps like it's like almost like a rubber stamp of like boom this is like bona fide as authentic as it comes you know it's a Lego funny video game but guess what it, it's it's bang it's authentic and like if you're a Marvel fan this stuff is like legit I think is probably the best way to to say it but working with him was super cool and he was such a great guy got to do a, a panel at comic-con with him um and i remember him seeing the game right because obviously he's a writer so he looks at like you know white with, with words and stuff and when he saw the script come to life but in a 
a video game he was like this is just great this is like this is so cool because it's a different medium i, I, I thought it was really really eye-opening what what was the decision to have kang the conqueror be the main villain so that comes about um there was a number of reasons this came about um part of it was because we we like to sort of predict things and we're like kang's gonna be a big like kang hasn't had his time in the sun you know everyone knows about you know galactus or you know thanos or you know whoever it may be we're like like not enough people know about kang and it's like kang is like the ultimate and, and you know if you do like some reading on kang and, and his history and all the various iterations over time and he just becomes this amazing character that that can that can allow anything and i think that's what what, what we kind of locked into was how he, how he was able to do that if you read some of the comics with kang in he is um he's not a very nice guy right <laughs> but at the same time um he's a torn guy and 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 like this gift of being able to travel through time and space um while he uses it because he just wants ultimately wants the destruction of the avengers it's it's like you've got it you, sometimes you feel a little bit sorry for him um and then it, we we just thought there was loads of like loads of room to play with him so you know we absolutely nailed down on um on him as the main villain and and then the next thing was like finding the right voice for him um and and i think like um you know we settled on peter serafinovich to like almost instantly because his voice is like amazing and i think as you as you listen to kang in the story if you haven't played this game um you, you you've got to just listen for that performance um it is incredible it's incredible it's, it, it, it's like it's terse and harsh and like domineering over like the, the citizens of chronopolis and at the same time like that juxtaposition of instantly having like the funniest quirkiest line but said so deadpan it's like it's just perfect. He's just he's just a great actor. He's like in fact everyone that we always work with is great. But, but Peter did an amazing job on this. Um, there, there's this moment where I was flying around, I was playing this game, and I just hear Ken going, Kang, 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 just saying his name repeatedly. <laughs> Because there's moments in the game when you're in Chronopolis where he'll be on like a basically a megaphone or a speaker for people who haven't played the game yet, and he'll just start talking nonsense, and it's so funny. Yeah. Like it just it kind of just happens in the background when you don't kind of know it. Um, <laughs> when you least expect it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like super funny, um, and some of that was like ad lib. Um, I was about the, to ask that. I was about to ask was some of it ad libbed yeah and, and again this is like i, I think I, I think for anyone that, that doesn't really know how video games are stitched together um like voice actors are like true unsung heroes and i i think sometimes they don't get like enough credit because their performance can just transform like a game um and, and it's just like they, they all they get given is is like a script and like some direction and we give them like some videos and they get to see stuff but they bring these guys as our animators bring them to life like the, the voice actors bring them to life and it's sometimes the, 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 the it's just perfection but they yeah they like to get into character as well they like to add them and that's when things sometimes go just like super funny um but yeah it's great it's the, the voice actors do a great job this this is a cool level. I this is a, that, this is a beautiful level. level. Oh, I, need, I think I need Star Lord. I love, I love, I love uh, yeah. I there love the Guardian. And it's, it's, and every so level cool. there's also a hidden Stan Lee, which I which I love. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Yeah, and and again this yeah yeah. God bless his soul. I had I had the absolute pleasure of 
uh, yeah, we did a, a panel with, with Stan at uh, Comic Con in 2013 for the first uh, Lego Marvel superheroes, and I remember his reaction to seeing him and get because obviously we had fun with him. Like we gave we gave Stanley like Spider Man powers and a giant mech and all sorts of other stuff, and the mech had this cool mustache. But um, like his reaction to seeing some of the stuff that he could do in a Lego game was priceless. Um, and obviously, you know one of the sort of co-creators of, of everything that we now see and love. Um, that was like, for me, that was definitely a pocket this tick off. And um, yeah, so again, you, you find a stand in here uh, in every level, because again, it's one of those things, like you've got the main story beats, you've got the drive of the story, you've got to get from somewhere to somewhere. You, 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 you've got to get the, you know, basically the you know, nexus of all realities and everything. But at the same time, if you want to go and wander over into a corner and find a mini kit or, you know, a, a character token or whatever it may be, that's what we want you to do. We want people to have fun with what we make. I was like trying to find him you... earlier. I'm like, I don't know where he is. <laughs> like some of the gameplay the team come up with, like, I'm sure there was probably an easier way to get past like the sensors here. But no, this is great because, yeah. I mean, the, the the big thing about Lego. It's a, that interaction, that that building. And that's yeah. what you, uh, you and you do that seamlessly. That you can just knock something down and then build it right back up to something completely different. And I yeah. love that. I, I, yeah, I'll go for it. I don't know if you know, we actually have like there's people in our office um, the, the build build real Lego, by the way. So th their job is like what everything that you that you see in in um, a video game has to be able to be built in real life. I had no um, idea. Yeah, yeah, because, like, you know, we, we get people that, that, that play the games that want to see all this stuff and want to make it. You know, usually it's like, the, you know, if we make a cool Milano or we make, like, a like a, a little mini uh, Quinjet or whatever it may be. Um, but they want to be able to make it for real. So we have to make sure these things can be made for real. So uh, we've got an amazing models team um, who make stuff in real life. And, yeah. Um, sometimes they don't let me go over there because usually it's like, oh yeah, can you know, take a look at this? And, and there's so, obviously because it's all different colors because it's just the bits we've got in the office. And you're like, oh, we're going to think about making it like this shape. And I always pick it up and I'm like, oh, that looks really good. And then it's like, Shh. You know, I'm like kind of club handed. Um, so yeah, I, 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 whenever I go over, I'm not allowed to touch them. So but it's probably quite good that we're working remotely because then I can't break my leg. <laughs> so on top of designing this digitally or through through the video game lens, taking the first you take the minifig, then you put it into the video game. You also have a team dedicated to building it in real life. That what? That's insane. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. You like here's the thing. So when anyone that's played it, if you haven't, when you do play it, like the Sword of Democles, like like Kang's like huge spaceship. They have to know that that can be built in real life. Um, so they'll kind of build maybe a scale version, because uh, obviously we can't build like, you know, football pitch sized like Lego. Um, but they'll build it. But then they also have all of the pieces in, um, in a software program. So then they build it brick by brick. So everything you see is actually built brick by brick in, in 3D. But they also try and make sure since that everyone can be built into it, it's sort of in real life um, Lego as well. So yeah, we've got some really good, good That's talented amazing. people. So it's great. It's great to work with. Obviously, your job is like a juggler, right? You have so many different hats that you wear. So this is going to be a hard question to answer. But when working on these games, what's when you go like what was what's your favorite aspect of it? Oh, I know, <laughs> yeah, no, right? The hardest question. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a lot of, for, for me, I think, like my favorite, and I probably speak on behalf of, like definitely everyone that's ever been to a public event. I think my favorite aspect is seeing a child, like like a young child, play the game, and seeing them. Like usually, it's something like Comic Con where they're, they're like. They, 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 you know, they're looking up at the screen because they're like they're only like two foot nothing um, with the controller and the controller's like huge in their hands because they're, they're only little people because like they're, they're only like like four or five and just like 
seeing Iron Man, and they're just like, you know, their mouths down, they're like, oh, this is so cool. And then you see the mum or the dad being like, okay, come on, we've got to go now. And that's like, they're rooted. It's like they've turned into Groot, and then they've, they've rooted into the spot, and they're not going anywhere. I, I love that. I love that element. Um, I also love, like, when we as a team review stuff, and people in the room are like, that is so cool. And yeah, you know, because because they're fans of, of, of the stuff we make as well. They can see. I, I love the Ronan minifigure. Oh, yeah, it's so good! Again, it's so happy. good. Yeah, and Star Lord is just. This is great. This is like this is a dance off waiting to happen. Um, yeah, so so I. It's really hard to put anything down. I think as designers, we love the fact that usually we have a blank piece of paper, and we'll have an idea for something and, and th usually there'll be just a handful so it might be me and uh me and sharpie or will or whoever it may be or, or banks car we'll sit in a, we'll be sat in a room like three four five of us whatever and, and we'll just be bouncing ideas around and sometimes they're really silly ideas and then we'll kind of convince ourselves that it's a good idea and i know that sounds weird but <laughs> Like if in, if if you say enough the same thing enough times, everyone's nods and goes, "Yeah, this, yeah, oh, you, you know what? This will be the best thing. This will be so good." Um, seeing those things when they actually are good, like a lot of the time, they, I, you know, surprise. A lot of the time, you convince yourself something's good. It's not going to be good, and so we have to like rethink it. But when those moments end up being special, they're like they're, they're superb. Um, and again, like, yeah, some of the stuff that we did in this game for, for Gru, um, is, is great. Just the abilities and, and sometimes when someone else adds like a little flavoring of, of like a move that someone can do that's just, maybe three people will understand it. And, and, and it's like, they're that obscure, but when they do, it's cool. Or when you look on uh, online and someone's like uh, done a, a video of like you know the five most obscure things in Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, or, and like you see that someone found the thing that you put in that you didn't think anyone would find, they are like they are cool moments. And you know, as designers, we all um, <laughs> we like to put that kind of that kind of stuff in um, just for people to find, I guess. Do you have a do you have a favorite or a very rare Marvel reference that someone found that you like? How did they find that? Uh, or that has yet um, to be found? Hmm. <laughs> I know that was the hard one, right? There's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let me. I'm gonna. <laughs> you, you can think. You can totally think on that. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a super sprawling game, and then for me to be like, hey, what's like that one part that's like super rare that nobody knows? You'd be like, okay, oh man, the list of things <laughs> happen. One thing that I that I would say is, I mean, and this, to me, I wouldn't say this is rare, but it's that ode to character uniqueness is what you mentioned before, and what you can do with each specific character. Each specific character has their own action or move you know Kamala Khan getting bigger or smaller Groot getting growing and not only does you know yeah. the, he starts sprouting with that uh, you know um, you have Ghost Spider playing the drums when you have you you, have, you can go from Spider-Man to Peter Parker and then have a camera it's, it's, it's the little things that, that I think become the big things so yeah 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 and, and, and that is like that's the true like testament to everything that we do um but yeah like back to the easter egg thing there's so many things that people probably have never experienced um you know li little niceties like you know you can have like <laughs> you know <laughs> if, you, if you're group yeah. near rocket raccoon baby group can like go on rocket shoulders oh cool, what right? i just I didn't even know you could do that <laughs> yeah but obviously, as big group, Rocket, you're on big group shoulders. So <laughs> it's little, it's little touches like that. Um, you know, there's also some uh, Easter eggs that people have to think about a little bit. Um, so 
Um, you remember that there's the party in Sick. Avengers Mansion earlier yeah. on in the game? Like, that one there, there's, like, yeah, you've got Captain Marvel says she loves a bit of brie. Well, there you go. I'll leave that one there. Everyone understands that cheese reference. But also, <laughs> the other reference, hey, it's just little nods. There's so many. So many. I mean, one second, we just got a little hiccup on the game a little bit, just loading it back up. So while that's doing it, what's Arthur's superhero of choice, both in-game and in general? <laughs> okay, so anyone that knows me well enough um, knows that, that like, I've got, I, I've got a thing for the thing. Um, <laughs> and I think it was because everything that, that I, you know, I've read and I, he was my favorite character growing up, like clobbering time. It's just, you say those words and I'm like all in. And, and you know, that's why it's great to be able to do that character justice in the, in the first Lego Marvel Superheroes. But then like in, in uh, Lego Marvel Superheroes 2, I li like I like the Inhumans, mm. and it's again it's a it's a group of characters that they're not as well known as like the Avengers or the Guardians or whoever Fantastic Four whatever it might be, um, and it was great it was great to be able to bring like Medusa I li like I like Medusa like because she's a challenge right, um, but I like so many characters it's I love Hulk. Yeah, I grew up on like, I grew up on proper like old school Hulk. Um, you know, uh, and then, and then like, you know, seeing all the Hulks through the ages, it's like Hulk's incredible. I love, I love the fact that this guy gets angry and turns into a Hulk. I love that. I, there's so many cool characters. Jameson is an amazing character, right? Love it. In it. In, an, in a weird, obscure fashion. He's like, I know he's got no superpowers, apart from the fact that he's always angry, but, um, but then Hulk's always angry, so you never know. But yeah, there's, there's just, there's a lot of cool characters. It's so hard, you know, I, I think I've been, I think I've been asked a million and one quite times, like what my favorite character is, and it, the things are, con are constant, but in terms of other characters, there's so many great characters. Yeah, I, I love Kamala Khan. I, I think I think I think she's like a terrific character. Um, yeah, I love it. I mean, the, again, the list the list goes on. Like I feel like it never ends, right? Yeah, but it's like here's the thing. So Marvel, Marvel is like a big IP. They, there's over like eight thousand characters. Um, yeah, there's so many characters. Like I love Spider Man. I love Throg. I love I love weird, wacky, obscure characters because obviously we managed to get those into this game. Yes. Um, but then you know what? I, I love straight up classic Spidey, like like just Spidey that I grew up with. Um, you know, this there is like I, and I love Captain Marvel and you know, there's so many good characters. I love Crystal. <coughs> there's there's too many characters. Like I doubt anyone you could say to anyone. Character, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, I love Iceman," and then not go, "Ah uh, yeah, but you know what? Yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, I really like Iron Man. Uh, no, I like Black Widow. Uh, yeah, they got you go on for, for forever and a day because there are too many characters, um, and that's the great thing. That's what keeps people there. It's like you, when you've got Doctor Octopus or Mysterio. Craven, the list is endless. Daredevil, Doctor Strange, was. It's like right when you think of one character, you think of like four more, and you just go, oh, and that leads to four other ones. Yeah, I, I remember there's a, like a really tiny anecdote. I, I did, um, we did some press for Lego Marvel Superheroes 2, and I was challenged um, to name as many characters that were in the game as possible in 30 seconds, right? Oh man. And, um, yeah. I, I got, I think it was, I got 52, which was like... That's really hard. Oh, That's we, really good. I was in the zone, and I was just like... And, and it was just like, bam, 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 bam. And I thought, that was like super impressive. I, I instantly got beaten by like someone else who just rip rattled off more Marvel characters than me. So I'm obviously not that good. But, um, it was fun. It was a fun thing to do. So we got, we got an, another question. Let me see if I can pull it up. Here we go. 
What's the thought process behind the level design? Are they designed with particular character abilities in mind, or carefully constructed so it can be completed by all characters? So, what was the first bit again? Yeah, what's the Sorry, thought process? Yeah, no, no worries. What's the thought process behind the level design? Okay, so, like, this is okay. I can't give away too many secrets. Like, <laughs> Wait, well, I thought this was the secret. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, did, we've got one guy on the team who's great, Will. Um, if you ever see a waterfall in our games, always look behind it because you will always design something behind a waterfall. Like that's a that's a running thing. But the, the way we look like look at our level design is like we know where we want to take you. We know we want to take you for a boss fight with Serta or um, you know uh, I, I don't know the Red King or uh, the Living Mummy or whoever it is we we want to take you on a boss fight to or, or, or like a, a culmination of the level. And what we like to do is take you on like an emotional journey, if that makes sense. So that there's various things along the way through the level. So we're going to want you to be like, you know, maybe apprehensive a little bit or excited or maybe even like slightly puzzled or, you know, um, you know, like just laughing at a minute. Or So we'll, we'll like try and map out like a little bit of emotion, like how we want the player to feel. And then we'll also want to take them on a journey in terms of things that they'll encounter. So if it's a new mechanic, we have to design that a bit carefully how they encounter it. Or if it's like coming across a, because sometimes you know, like you go to a level and you get another character you've not played as, who's added in to your party and you get to do stuff. We, we try and make it so that there's just a nice narrative, if that makes sense, through the level. Um, and then obviously work around in terms of like the, 3D environment, the shapes, the space, make it authentic, um, and always try to keep like the player so they can see where they've got to go. If that makes sense, there's loads. I'm giving away too many. <laughs> I love it. I'm ready. I hope everyone's writing it down. I hope everyone's writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that there. Research and development. Like, the that is the titles, the level titles: Tornado, No E Son of Mine, Hala is it Cree <laughs> you're looking for? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> So yeah. many more questions they, that yeah. I have, but I don't want to take up more of your time. I know you're okay. in a different time zone and it's it's getting late over there. Guys, this is Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. You can get the entire entire Lego Marvel collection in Lego Marvel Super Heroes 1, Lego Marvel Avengers, and Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, all three games, and all of the season pass content, which is all of the DLC. It's available right now. PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. We just had Arthur Parsons the head of design for TT Games joining us here, playing the game. Arthur, thank you so much. Any final words to your fans? I, well, my, first of all, my pleasure. Like that is just super fun. Um, doing like I, I want to. I, I want to be an influencer now. I'm going to quit my job <laughs> and like do this all the time because it's so much fun. Um, I, all I would say to everyone out there is like, you know, thank you for like liking what we do. Thank you for keeping me in a job. Is the short answer. Um, but the team love the fact that, you, that everyone loves what we do. Um, I'd like to thank the team because they're amazing. And I can't believe that you can get like all of those three games and all the content um, in one package because like, I'm going to add it up. There's a lot of my life and the team's life there. So do yourself a favor. Pick that up if you haven't already because that's, that's, that's enough game to last you the rest of the year <laughs> yes like, that's, it's awesome um no like thank you and you know what it's an absolute honor uh to be able to work and, and within the, like the marvel space because you know I, i'm a comic book fan i love my job and uh i'm glad everyone likes what we make so thank you all awesome arthur thank you so much everybody thank you so much for tuning in this is marvel your universe <laughs>